Hi guys, Aaron Dorr here with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. Next to the U.S. Senate primary, the number one race that we're being asked about is the 7th Congressional Republican Party primary. Primary is coming up fast and you guys are asking us in droves, who is the pro-gun candidate in this race? But you're also asking us, who can get stuff done for us if elected into office in Washington, D.C.? You know, everyone knows there's a strong chance, maybe even a likelihood, that the GOP is going to take back control of the House, maybe even both chambers, in Washington, D.C. in the fall midterms. And if that happens, we cannot waste any time. We have got to go on full attack to undo the damage that Joe Biden has done so far, but also go on offense with bills like the National Reciprocity Law, National Suppressor Legislation, and start to codify freedoms that we haven't had in this country for a very long time. We have to know then who's pro-gun, but who can get stuff done for gun owners here in Southwest Missouri. We're discussing this area down here. It's the Southwest corner. Congressman Long is the current representative. Of course, he's left that seat to run for the U.S. Senate, opening up this great big primary. Now, there is a bunch of candidates in this race, to be fair. Many of those candidates are not viable. Some have stopped campaigning. And it kind of comes down to the top three candidates in this race who are still viable in this election. So we're going to talk about Mike Moon, Jay Wasson, and Eric Burleson. Now, my goal here is not to tell you guys who to vote for. We can't do that. Our job is to give you guys a detailed analysis on these candidates so you can make an informed choice when you decide who you want to vote for. We do that through a couple different things. We use candidate survey programs. We ask all the candidates the same questions, the same 10 questions. If elected, how would you vote on this? How would you vote on that? They're not complicated. The questions aren't hard. No double negatives because the issue is not hard. It's the Second Amendment. Either you're for it or against it. You're for freedom or you're for socialism. Where are you? Answer the question. So we use a survey program first, and then we compile their records. These three candidates are all current or former state senators. And so we have a lot of details, a lot of votes, a lot of action that we can look back and give you guys as part of this report. And then finally, we check online to see their websites, we attend their forums sometimes, and to hear, are they passionate about guns at all? Is it a throwaway line at, at a campaign stop? How do they treat the Second Amendment in their campaign? And from there, we're going to give you guys the report we have prepared for you here today. So we're going to begin with Mike Moon. Mike Moon, former state rep. Uh, he got into the state Senate just a year and a half ago, or two years ago, I guess it is now, in the Senate. And a lot of you guys know Mike. A lot of you guys know Mike is a pro-gun legislator, and he is, no question about it. Sadly, Mike hasn't surveyed with us in this cycle, and we, frankly, don't know why. When a candidate won't survey, it's a danger sign. We'd like to know where he stands on the current issues in Washington, D.C. The, the issues here in Jeff City are different than the issues in Washington, D.C. In D.C., for, for gun rights organizations, their goal is to repeal the ATF. The goal is to repeal, get rid of it, dissolve it. The goal is to roll back much of the gun control currently on the books, like the Federal Gun-Free School Zones Act, things like that. We tried to ask Mike where he stands on those issues, and he wouldn't answer the question. I can't give you a reason as to why. You should ask him that kind of stuff yourself, in fact. But I want to mention, in the context of getting things done, in the context of leading that fight for gun rights, Mike Moon hasn't passed a bill in his 10 years in Jefferson City. And that's a concern. That's a concern. He files bills, and we applaud him for that. But we want to see guys that can file the bill and then work, do the work, fight with your, in, with your, with your own party sometimes, with the opposing party, with leadership. Navigate that process and get stuff done. And it's 10 years so far in Jeff City, I have to tell you, Mike Moon hasn't filed, hasn't passed, excuse me, a gun bill. Now, in many ways, Mike has seemed to kind of suspend or stall his campaign. So we're not going to discuss Mike Moon much more. That's what we have for you when it comes to Mike Moon. Some questions that need answers in that situation. Jay Wasson. Jay Wasson is certainly campaigning very aggressively. Jay Wasson, he's just one of those guys that he, ha he has all the wrong friends. He has all the wrong friends, all the wrong packs, 
all the wrong donors, all the wrong outside groups. Just one of those guys that kind of makes you scratch your head and say, is he actually a fighter for gun owners or is he just trying to play the game? Well, you guys decide. First of all, Jay Wasson will not answer his Missouri Firearms Coalition candidate survey. We don't know where he stands on red flag gun seizures. And folks, there is a large number of Republicans in D.C. right now who want to pass a national red flag gun seizure bill. Mitt Romney's pushing this. Lindsey Graham is pushing this. Susan Collins is pushing this. A large and growing number. We have to know how will Jay, Jay Wasson vote on a federal red flag gun seizure bill. He won't answer. We've asked him, would you co-sponsor national stand your ground law? Jay Watson won't answer. We asked him, would you oppose a national gun registry? When this bill passed the House a year ago, dozen or more Republicans aided Pelosi in voting for that bill. It has rhino Republican support. We want to know from Jay Watson, would you vote for that? He refuses to answer the question despite numerous attempts to get him to do so. That is a very, very big concern for us here at the Missouri Firearms Coalition. Just that the big question is why? Like what, are you ha what are you trying to hide? What's the problem? Why is it so complicated? This is very simple. It's 10 questions, fill it out, put your views in writing. He won't do it. Now, if you go to Jay Watson's events, if you go to a campaign forum, you'll hear him tell you how he's pro-gun. Oh, I'm pro-gun. And you'll hear him say how he's helped lead the fight for gun rights in Jeff City. No, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. In his time in Jeff City, Jay Wasson never filed a single gun bill ever. Not one. To our knowledge, and, we, and it's hard to check every single possible bill and amendment, I'm not even sure that Jay Wasson ever even co-sponsored a gun bill in Jefferson City. He dang sure never sponsored one, likely never even co-sponsored a gun bill in Jeff City. Now let me tell you how this dynamic works in Jeff City. When a gun bill gets to the floor for a vote, it's already done. At that point, the votes have been counted, all of the work has been done. This is the final piece, and everybody goes, they, all, they vote yes or they vote no, if they're Democrats, that's it. The real fighting, that takes place from February to the end of, end of April, that's the committees, that's all uh, dealing with all the outside pressure, that's all the media, and it's all the inner party crap between rhino leaders and pro-gun champions who are trying to force their leadership to hold votes on these vital bills. That's where the fighting takes place. And Jay Wasson never got off his butt during any of his years in office in Jefferson. So he can sit there and say how he's pro-gun, but he never lifted a finger. That's what you have to remember about Jay Wasson. And when you, can, when you combine that complete lack of fighting with no survey from us or uh, sent back to us right now, a lot of danger signs when it comes to Jay Wasson's commitment to the Second Amendment. And that brings up Eric Burleson. Now, if you're a gun owner in Missouri, there's a strong chance you know the name Eric Burleson, not just in southwest Missouri, everywhere in Missouri. The reason for it is that Eric Burleson has passed more pro-gun bills into law here in Missouri than any legislator in the history of Missouri politics. I'm going to say it for you again. Burleson has passed more pro-gun bills into law than any legislator ever in Missouri politics. But I'll go beyond that. I work in a bunch of states, not just in Missouri, and I, have, I, I know of no legislator at the state level who's alive today who has passed more pro-gun bills into law than Eric Burleson. The guy has been relentless in his pursuit of fighting for gun owners in Jefferson City. So naturally, he surveyed 100% with us. That's a given. But more than that, here's the story you have to know. 2021, Eric Burleson was the lead sponsor on the Second Amendment Preservation Act, which, is, as you guys all know, is now law here in Missouri. SAPA law is what's holding back federal gun control here in Missouri because it says that Missouri cops will not enforce federal gun control laws. The, the DOJ hates this. 
Merrick Garland hates this. Joe Biden hates this. And they're constantly using the DOJ to try to roll back Missouri's SAPA law. We were in Kansas City Court just two weeks ago. My, I was there. Burleson was there. And the DOJ said there's no other state in the country where we have problems like this because only Missouri has a SAPA law like this. That's because of Eric Burleson. He led that fight. He fought that bill through all the rhinos to try to stop him in the Senate. And on that last day of session, with a seven hour long Democratic filibuster, Burleson and a bunch of other conservative guys fought like hell for seven hours to pass that bill and bypass that filibuster. So if you like Missouri's SAPA law, that's Eric Burleson's work that got that done. But that's not it. Also, if you like stand your ground law, Eric Burleson passed stand your ground law when he was in the Missouri House. Now, prior to Burleson's law, you had to retreat if you were attacked in a public place. It's madness. But that was the law until Burleson changed that and allowed you to stand your ground and defend yourself and your loved ones from a violent criminal. Burleson also passed constitutional carry. This was the big one, 2016. This was a huge fight that lasted for about a year and a half, and it ended with then-Governor Nixon vetoing that bill in a successful veto override fight in September of 2016. This was our bill. We helped write this one as well. We were there and helped push this bill through every one of the committees, this entire process. I can tell you guys firsthand, this was an all-out war. This was an all-out battle. Many Republicans, many Republicans in the House were trying to stop Burleson from passing this bill. The media called him a nut job. Uh, national media, state media, the nightly uh, uh, lefty talk shows, all of them attacked Burleson for trying to pass constitutional carry. They called it radical. They called it crazy. Burleson didn't care. He kept fighting. He kept his nose to the grindstone, and he got this done for us in 2016, a major accomplishment for freedom. Burleson also expanded, or passed a law to expand Missouri's Castle Doctrine Law. Now, this might sound weird, but it's true. Before Burleson's bill became law, if, uh, if I was at your home having dinner with you one night, and someone attacked your home, a home invasion, you know, whatever it was, I could not draw my own firearm to defend myself or you and your family because I didn't own the home. At that time, the law said only the homeowners or the property owners could use defensive force in the case of a self-defense shooting. It was a weird nuance in Missouri law, but Burleson changed that law and said anybody who is lawfully present on the property could use defensive force against a violent criminal. That was Burleson's law as well. Lifetime carry permits. Also, Eric Burleson's law. So if you want your permit, you don't have to. We have constitutional carry. But if you want a permit and you want to bypass all of the renewal problems and the hassles and the, just the time involved, you can get a lifetime carry permit here in Missouri, courtesy of the bill that Eric Burleson passed when he was in the House. And this year, 2022, Burleson led the bill, led the fight to expand stand your ground law here in Missouri. That fight is not done yet, but Eric uh, uh, led that fight took lots of arrows in the chest, again, from the liberal media, and lots of knives in the back from rhino Republicans in Jeff City. But that fight still goes on, but it was, it was made possible because Burleson filed that bill for us again this year. So every expansion of gun rights in Missouri over the last decade, every expansion of gun rights was because Eric Burleson passed these bills. SAPA, constitutional carry, stand your ground law, Castle Doctrine, lifetime carry permits, all Eric Burleson's laws. So if you're a gun owner in Southwest Missouri and you're asking yourself, who has a history of fighting for gun owners? Who has a history of getting things done for gun owners? Who is likely to go to Washington, D.C. and then continue to fight and deliver for gun owners? You can decide for yourself, but the facts here are very dynamic. The differences here are very dynamic. Burleson has 12 years of history of fighting and delivering for gun owners. Jay Wasson has done nothing for gun owners, ever. And now he won't survey, won't tell us where he stands, hiding his views in the Second Amendment. Very troubling stuff. So guys, take a moment today. If you're in Southwest Missouri, and thank Eric Burleson for his strong support for your gun rights. And if you see Jay Lawson, ask him, 
Where's your survey? Don't tell me you're pro-gun. You didn't, you didn't do anything for us in Jeff City. So don't tell me you're pro-gun. I want your views in writing. Burleson did it. Why won't you, Jay? That's the question you guys need to ask Jay Wasson on the campaign trail. Guys, that's the report we have for you in this race. Take a moment today and share it. Get the word out there. Share it on social media. Email it out to your friends. Make sure everyone in this area knows who has been fighting for gun owners and winning for gun owners for years here in Missouri. And guys, finally, join our fight today at www.joinmofc.com.